Hello YouTube, Matt Mason here, and today we have some Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and what I want to talk about today is going to be the new consoles that we're going to be getting, assumably in the holiday of 2017, that's the announcement we've gotten so far, for Project Scorpio from Microsoft, as well as the PlayStation Neo, of course, from Sony. These are going to be powerful new versions of the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, which has some people somewhat upset because the Xbox One and PS4 didn't come out that long ago, they say, but in reality, by the time these consoles actually come out, it's going to be about four years since the PlayStation for and the Xbox One have actually released. Now, a lot of people kind of have this idea that console generations need to last nearly a decade because that's kind of what happened with the transition between the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One. But if you guys look at this chart here I put together for you guys, console transitions themselves typically don't last as long as they did between the 360 and the Xbox One and the PS3 to the PS4. Typically just not that long. Usually it's about four or five years. And by the time these consoles actually come out, because again, they're both kind of set to come out in the holiday season, season of 2017, it's going to be about four years since the launch of the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, which in my opinion is actually a really good time to have an upgrade to the consoles after four years, because the uh, hardware that was in the PS4 and the Xbox One initially was already outdated by the time that they were released, so having new consoles come out means new games can look better, they can run better, it just it seems like a good idea overall. You take a $500 console, which is what the Xbox One initially cost when it first released, and then you average that out over four years, it actually comes out to be a pretty good value, honestly. That equates to about 34 cents per day which is really not that bad if you think about it it's even cheaper than that if you were to have bought in a PlayStation 4 because that was $400 at launch it was even cheaper and think about how much entertainment you actually get out of your Xbox One or your PlayStation 4 not only as a gaming device but as a home entertainment device for those of you guys that are primarily console gamers that sounds like a pretty good deal to me now if you're somebody who barely plays their console maybe it's not as good of a deal but if you're somebody who plays their console often that's their primary way of gaming they also use it for Netflix and uh, watching YouTube and Twitch and stuff like that as well. It's just a really good deal if you ask me. Now where that argument kind of falls apart is the PlayStation Neo and Project Scorpio do not appear to be cheap consoles. Right now we have way more questions than we have answers and Sony's PlayStation Neo is completely shrouded in mystery because it was just announced prior to E3 and was not presented at E3 whatsoever. We did not get to learn barely anything about the PlayStation Neo but Microsoft's Project Scorpio looks to have some seriously beefy hardware in it. If you watch E3 of course they talked a lot about Project Scorpio. If you guys would like to see my video covering that, it's going to be on your screen right now. You guys can just click the annotation or click the link to it down there in the video description, both of which will open the video up for you in a brand new tab. Now, I'm not much of a tech guy. I know quite a bit, but I can't tell you exactly what the hardware is going to cost that they're putting in Project Scorpio that they described in those videos. But people much more informed than me are estimating that the console itself is going to run for a minimum of $800 at launch. Other people are saying that selling it for $1,000 at launch would be Microsoft actually taking a loss. I couldn't tell you guys. What does this mean? I mean, if these prices are really anything to go on, then these systems may actually be the first enthusiast line of consoles, which sounds very interesting to me. Similar to the PC market, there will be consoles of varying power that can all run the same games and peripherals. They talked about it with Project Scorpio during their presentation that all Xbox One games, headsets, controllers, peripherals, all of that are going to work across the entire Xbox One family, from the original one that was released back in 2013 to the new Xbox Slim that's going to be coming out, I believe in August, if I have that right, I think it's August, to the big and powerful Project Scorpio that's going to be released in the holiday of 2017. It's going to be interesting to see exactly how that is all going to work out. This has me wondering how they plan on doing the games, with the biggest question being, of course, will old games be scaled similar to how they are on PC? If you take your average PC game, it can be scaled to accommodate varying degrees of hardware, because PC is not just a unified system like you have like with an Xbox 360 where people that are developing for that game know exactly what their hardware the Xbox 360 is going to have in it, but on a PC it has varying degrees, so you are going to have people that are able to run on low or medium or high or ultra or even sometimes epic quality settings, it just all depends on what machine they're running, so they have to scale their game accordingly and have different degrees of graphical power. The Xbox One is somewhat notorious for not actually running games at native 1080p. Now I'm not saying all Xbox One games don't run in 1080p because a lot of them do, but there's some of them that don't. They run something like, I don't know, 900p scaled up to 1080p. Will the games that did this, like for example Call of Duty Ghosts, be scaled to run natively at 1080p on Project Scorpio, or will they remain the same? Black Ops 3 is another great example. A lot of the maps
maps take some time to load in on occasion. Not all the time, but I think we've all had matches where, for example, on Aquarium, you load in and the wall textures are just a giant blur, or matches where our weapon camos don't load in properly, and we have kind of like a weird pseudo half camo, which is sometimes actually look really cool, but still, our camos aren't loading in properly. And that's because, even though these consoles are the newest one on the market, they have trouble rendering everything in the game at once. Will this be fixed with Project Scorpio and with the PlayStation Neo, or will it remain the same? Can graphical scaling happen via updates? That's something I don't know. I'm asking you guys if you guys maybe have more experience in this than I do. Can they actually do graphical scaling via updates and make it so these games run a little bit better on Project Scorpio, or will we have to wait for games to launch specifically for the PlayStation Neo and Project Scorpio to actually see the true potential of these consoles? The biggest question for me, Will these consoles be worth upgrading to if you're a gamer who isn't on the VR bandwagon? For me, personally, I, this is just my opinion, I could not care less about VR. I'm just not hyped for it. I don't see the appeals. Sure, some things sound really cool. Like, if I could actually be immersed in a world that I really like, like, for example, you guys know I'm a big Borderlands nerd. If I could just walk around Sanctuary or if I could walk around Firestone, not even shooting a gun or anything like that, but just walk around and feel like I'm actually there, that would be really cool to me. That would definitely be something that may actually actually get me excited for VR, but for the most part, the stuff I've seen from VR just doesn't seem interesting. I don't want to play mini golf in VR. I, rolling, riding a roller coaster, that sounds like it's just going to make me sick. Uh, going into like a horror games in VR sounds terrible to me. I hate horror games. Like the idea that you can like play a game where you'd be in a shark cage and the sharks are banging up against your cage. Like that sounds horrifying. Why would I want that experience? You know, I don't want that. For me, I'm just not on the VR bandwagon. I'm not saying I'm never going to be on the bandwagon. Perhaps I'll change my mind down the road, but just for right now, I'm just, I'm not excited for VR whatsoever. The big question is, will these consoles be good for gamers who aren't into VR? Because we've already seen them throwing around the VR buzzword a bunch with both these systems, but the question is, as a core gamer, will these consoles be worth upgrading to? Will games run seriously better and look significantly better? If so, I can see both of these systems being a huge success. I want more games running at native 1080p. I want more games running at native 60fps. No more frame drops. No more playing a third of a Call of Duty match with wall textures that are half loaded in. Just high quality video games with all the reliability of a console at a somewhat reasonable price. That is what I'm hoping for with the PlayStation Neo. That's what I'm hoping for with Project Scorpio. Right now, we don't know much more about these consoles. We know that Project Scorpio is supposed to be beefy. We know the PlayStation Neo is supposed to be beefy. Who knows what this means for the future of console gaming? When will we see brand new systems like the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox... Two. I, I only know what you would call the new Xbox after Project Scorpio. We'll be seeing that four years after Scorpio and Neo. We'll be seeing them sooner. We'll be like a two-year transition cycle. I don't know. Like I said, right now we have more questions than answers, but regardless, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I hope you guys all found it somewhat helpful and informative, and let me know in the comments. I'd just love to hear you guys' opinion, because of course this is just all my opinion, and I want to hear your guys' opinion as well. What do you guys think about Project Scorpio? What do you guys think about PlayStation Neo based on the limited information we have at this time? What do you guys think the games are going to run like? Do you think they're actually going to be worth upgrading to? Just, I would love to hear what you guys think based on the information we have right now down there in the comment section below. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you did, drop me a rating. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day.